As you get going with Spotfire, it's good to understand some fundamental concepts like the different user types and the different parts of the application, and that's the purpose of this video. To start, let's talk about the different user types. To start, there's three different license types or user types in Spotfire. There's the analyst, business author, and consumer. This is sometimes called the ABC model. And here the analysts can create whatever analytic models they want and scripts, they have full chart capabilities, they have full authoring capabilities, and they work from the desktop client. Now the business author is for the web browser editing and that's through the Spotfire web player. And they can create analysis and modify other analysis, save to the library and, and share with others. And then lastly, there's a consumer, and this is just the read-only license. They have full interactive capabilities to interact with analysis, but they're not authoring, and they'll work just from the web player as well. So an example here is the analyst license, and you'll see that here I have all my charts, and I can create uh, all of my dashboards and analysis how I'd like to, but I also have things like data functions and can create R scripts and do other advanced things, create Iron Python scripts. So that's all from the analyst desktop client. Now here I'm in the business author. This is the web interface client where I can view and I can also edit the analysis right from the web and right from my web browser. So I have different charts here. I can also go and add new data, connect to different data sources and create analysis from scratch if I'd like right from the web. And lastly, here is the consumer license. So this is in the web as well. There is no editing option, but I can still interact with the analysis and choose to mark and filter things and share this. I can access the library and all the other analysis shared with me in my library. So let's talk about the library and the major components of the Spotfire environment. Now from a user perspective, there's three major components of the Spotfire environment. There is the desktop client, there's a Spotfire server environment, and then there is the web player, which is the web browsers and mobile device usage, so the consumption layer. And here you have an analyst, and the analyst can again create right on the desktop client, they'll create a Spotfire DXP file, they can save that into their library in the Spotfire server environment, and that can then be accessed on the web players by the, all the other users that have permission to access that analysis. So that can be used in the browser as well as in mobile devices. Now the business user again can create DXPs right from the web browser and they can save that to the library as well and then anything in the library that the users have permission to access they can pull so a business author can create and modify DXPs and share that with others or just access DXPs created by others. And then finally there is the consumer which is the read only version and this way the consumer can actually look at DXPs they have access to and interact with them on their mobile devices and web browsers. They just can't edit them. It's just for consuming and reading them. Now, every organization typically has a Spotfire administrator that manages this whole environment. So you should ask your administrator if you have any questions about permissions or access. And for Tipco Cloud customers, the Spotfire server and the web player is managed by Tipco. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but you might still have an administrator managing your library and the access and permissions. Now talking about the different editions of Spotfire, there's an on-premise version of Spotfire which is installed at your organization on your organization's servers and that's managed by your organization's administrators. This has full access to anything you might need with Spotfire. Now there's also cloud versions of Spotfire that are managed by Tipco and these are administered from the server and the library. You can also have library administrators at your organization but the hardware and upgrades and everything is handled by Tipco. There's a multi-tenant version on Spotfire Cloud which allows everything except for some things like API scripting and data functions or some security concerns and things that might be limited to the multi-tenant version or you can do the single tenant version of Spotfire Cloud Enterprise where you have access to everything you want. It's essentially the same as the on-premise version except Tipco will administer the Spotfire server. And lastly, there's Spotfire and AWS which is the pay by the hour uh, Spotfire version that you can find on the AWS marketplace. If you're using Tipco Spotfire Cloud, Note that in the top right, you can select your region and you want to select the region that's closest to you. And if you have different teams on your Tipco Cloud account, you can select those from the team selection there. And note that you have in this download section an option to download the desktop client to give you the full analyst authoring experience. And you can install that on your local machine and connect to your cloud account. When you're logging into Spotfire, you might have different servers available set up by your administrator. You also might have different deployment areas. So there's separate Spotfire environments that can be created by your administrator for different purposes, such as testing, production, and deployment. And these are all separate libraries and different servers that you can connect to. Now the deployment areas are a little bit different where those are in a specific environment and those might just control different things like different modules and extensions. 
Now for all the business authors and analysts out there, there's five major concepts that you want to keep in mind when you're designing an analysis. And these major concepts are shown throughout the other videos to help you tie the individual features and individual functionality to the broader theme of these major concepts. So the first concept is on data access, and this has in-database and in-memory considerations. There's a whole separate video on the details involved with data access and the different ways of bringing data into Spotfire. Now, the next concept is managing all the different data tables and data sets that you have in Spotfire. And you can relate these and join these. So there's different data wrangling concepts on joining data uh, using the data canvas. And you can check out those videos for this concept. Now, transformation is how you might clean up your data, structure your data, prep your data, but also how you might use different calculations like calculated columns, or you might use R scripts and Python scripts, different advanced functionality and advanced calculations to transform your data, anything that you're doing to your data and, and you're transforming it. And we have different videos on this as well. And then visualization. So this is the most common reason why people use Spotfire is to visualize their data. So the visualization concepts go into how to construct and style and configure your visualizations. But the next, next major concept is on building an overall user experience and designing a visual analysis. And that's how you tie everything together. And you might create shortcuts and end user functionality, different buttons and controls to help create a finalized good experience. Now, the nice thing in Spotfire is that you don't have to keep rebuilding these analyses over and over. As new data comes in and becomes available, it's fed right through this pipeline and goes through all of the structure that you created for your final analysis. And that way you can just consume the analytics and not spend your time continuously preparing data and doing these processes all over again. And if you're using streaming data, this all happens in real time with real time data down to the second all being updated. Now, when you're actually designing an analysis, you might find yourself using all of these concepts in different ways. It's not always step by step. You might mix and match them for different ways of access and transformation, but eventually you'll tie them all together into one final analysis.